thanks for taking the time to speak to us. It's been a little over two months since you joined the club now. A lot's obviously happened in that time. How have you found it so far? Well, it certainly feels like longer than, than two months. Um, feels like a lot's happened since when we came in, um, well, it was last day of January to now. Um, some good, some bad, some indifferent, um, but we're very focused on you know, moving forward. Going back to the call from Frank when, he, when you first arrived here, how did that conversation go and how quickly did you accept his offer? Yeah, I mean, Frank called me when things started to get very serious in the discussions with Everton. I think he's pretty close to agreeing, um, but not quite. Um, you know, he asked me whether I'd be interested in coming and I always thought that if I was going to go back to being an assistant again, it would be in this kind of role, um, assisting someone like Frank, who I'd known for a long time since he was, since he was a player and worked with him, someone that I like and respect. And yeah, if I was going to do that role again, having been a manager the last five or six years, that it would be for someone like him. So it wasn't a difficult decision to come and work um, with Frank and you know, a great coaching team in my, my opinion. Uh, and also a fantastic club like, like Everton as well. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't much thinking about, to be honest. Uh, I think I got the call and two, two and a half days later, I was here back on the grass. How has your relationship with Frank evolved over time? Obviously a top player who you work with, as you mentioned. A young up-and-coming coach now. How do your philosophies align and have you found work with him so far? Well, so I first met Frank when we were, um, we were both at Chelsea. I was initially in the academy and then eventually stepped up to work um, with the first team where he was a player. And it was during two very successful years. Um, first of all, I was working, um, assisting Gus Hiddink and he was only there for three months. He was in an interim role. Um, won the FA Cup and then Carlo Ancelotti came in. Um, we had a very successful time in the season 2009-2010, which was a double winning team. Um, Frank was, you know, I think at the peak of his powers there, along with Ashley, John Terry, Drogba, Czech. It was a, it was a wonderful team to work with. A uh, big experience for me. Um, my first experience of working at senior level football. So, you know, our relationship goes back to then. We've kept in touch. Um, through the years. Um, I saw him when he was out in America. I was with Bayern Munich at the time. We met up for a coffee, um, seen him at various other times. And my first, um, sorry, his first game as a manager uh, at Derby County was against me when I was manager of Reading. Um, so that was, a, that was a nice thing, although it wasn't so nice for me when they won in the, la in the last minute of the game, 2-1. Uh, you mentioned your experience in your career so far, obviously as an assistant, as a manager in your own right as well. How much, how important is that to this current coaching staff and how much can you draw on that in these closing stages of the season? Well, I think from my own personal point of view of, you know, I still see myself as a relatively young coach, but maybe I'm actually not. I've been like 25 years now a coach. The last, what is it, 13, 14, working at senior level, both as a uh, as, a, as an assistant and also as a manager as well. Uh, lots of experience in there, of course. Uh, Premier League football, Championship football, European football, working in different leagues. So they're, they're all great things, but there's nothing more important than dealing with the now and the present. And, you know, we have a big task. And, you know, today's the most important day that we, that we have. Looking at that group of coaches that you're working with, how have you found that so far? Obviously a new dynamic new coaches, a few of you know each other. How have you found that so far? Oh, really good, really positive. It's one of the things I've enjoyed like, more than anything. There's a lots of enjoyable aspects about this, this job here at Everton, but that has to be you know, one of the standout ones for me. Um, we all know each other um, in various like, capacities. I've known Joe since he was a young academy player and I was a young coach in the academy. Myself and Chris Jones worked at Fulham together at Chelsea and now here at Everton. Ashley and Frank were obviously players when myself and Chris Jones were on the coaching staff. So we're a tight group and along with Duncan and, and Alan as well, I think we've got a strong, a strong coaching team. And I think it's you know, one of the best staffs that I've worked on, no, no, no doubt about that. Looking more broadly um, at Everton, obviously you came up against Everton in, for a number of different clubs. What was your perception of Everton before joining the, the club? Well, and not just perception, really, the, the reality of playing against them, particularly, um, both in my time at, 
at Chelsea and also when I was manager of Swansea, always difficult games. Um, clearly very, very difficult at Goodison, but also FA Cup final, um, games at Stamford Bridge, uh, games at the Liberty in Swansea come up against uh, Everton a lot. And they're always tough games, you know, playing at Goodison, especially midweek under the lights is um, quite daunting, especially for the players. I mean, a little bit different for the coaches because you're on, you're on the side, but for the players, and having had lots of discussion with players over the years, it's, they always talk about, about Goodison. You know, that traditional British stadium, English stadium, there's not many of them around now, but it's, it's got a passionate, incredible atmosphere. And we've experienced that in the short term that we've been here. So I think between, between the two, it is a powerful combination. And it was no better than at Leeds was one standout example. But the game against Newcastle with how that unfolded at the end, obviously we were hanging on at one point, having gone down to 10 men. But then to finish off with that 99th minute winner was as good as atmosphere I've ever experienced. It was absolutely fantastic and look forward to more times like that in the, in the next home games that we have. You mentioned your experiences of coming up against Everton and... It's always a difficult game, the attitude of the club and the, and the players and the fans. How much do you have to harness that and sort of implement that within the playing style as well as obviously implementing your own coaching ideas and philosophies? Well, I think the managers really try to embrace that. You know, when he came in, he understood very clearly. Having played at Goodison many, many times as a Chelsea player, he understands what the demands are of playing for the club and what the demands are of the supporters. You know, what they expect from their team, what they expect from their players. And I think his approach to the home games and what he's asked of the players and the players have really embraced that is that, you know, that high energy and pressing from the front where, where possible, trying to create as many chances, get the crowd behind the team is something that we have spoken about. Um, your title is first team coach. Appreciate it's a, a wide ranging role. But can you talk to us a little bit about your main responsibilities you've got? Well, I think you know, Frank's very inclusive in the way that he approaches management, which is nice for everyone that, that works with him. So the immediate coaching team of Joe, myself, Ashley, Chris, um, Duncan and Alan, we work very closely in collaboration with the manager. Manager's always in our, in our office. He sits down at the end and the discussions go on you know, all day long around the preparation for games. So... You know, we all have an input in the, um, you know, the selection of the team, the, the tactics, um, the training programme, the analysis, uh, and ultimately the manager makes the, the, the final decision. And that's, that's really important. But you know, he's got good staff around him, I think, that can offer their, uh, not, not so much opinion, but you know, where they see it. Um, and then... You know, we get behind him and we get behind the players once that plan's, once that plan's been set. I think um, you know, there's lots of different skills and experiences in the room, um, from Duncan and Alan through to Ashley, myself, Chris and Joe. They're all, they're all slightly different and I think that's important. It's important not to all think exactly the same, not all be alike, because there are different ways and it's up to us to put those ideas across but then when the manager decides that that's the plan, that we're all totally behind it. And um, you know, we really help in reinforcing those messages with the players, because when they go onto the pitch, when the pressure's high and things are moving so quickly, they need to be really clear in their mind about what we're asking of them individually and also um, as a team as well. Very, very important. We spoke to Joe uh, fairly recently and he spoke about the importance of having one-to-one -one time with the players and getting as much of that individual work in as possible. How important do you find that as well? Yeah, I think individual relationships with players is, is very important. Um, you know, you want to try and get the best out of each individual. You have to understand that each individual is a different personality, what works for them, what, what doesn't. Um, so getting to know them on a one-to-one -one level is very important. Um, and that's part of the jigsaw puzzle of putting together a, a team that can be effective in, in, in working together. So I think having a, you know, an experienced staff, um, an open staff, a staff that's 
you know, pretty good on the communication side, can only help the players. And you, you'll see us on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, getting around all the players. Uh, we try not to leave anyone or isolate anyone that doesn't get that sort of time to have those discussions, whether it's on an informal basis or whether it's more formal, sitting down in a meeting room, particularly with video, to feed back on, on performance. One of the areas I wanted to ask you about was something the manager touched on recently. He mentioned the work you've been doing with the players on set pieces. Was that an area you quickly identified as one to improve? I, mean, I think it was one of the things that could have been improved, and there was lot. There were, there were lots of things, and there continue to be a lot of things. Um, you know, the manager has given me some responsibility regarding um, the set plays, both on the defending and and the attacking side. It's something that uh, I had quite a bit of experience of working under working under Carlo. Since those years, I think set plays have um, evolved a lot. In, in the way they're analysed, in the use of data. Um, some teams even employ you know, an absolute specialist set play coach, that, that is their only responsibility. I think mine's a little bit, a little bit wider than that. Um, but you know, we're working hard on them. I think we did get some pretty quick improvement. That's probably plateaued off or dipped very slightly. Um, you know, which I'm going to address with the players in the coming days and games because I think it can be a real strength of ours because I, I recognise in us that we've got players that have got you know, good delivery. Unfortunately, Andros is now injured, but in, in Anthony and um, Damari and Donny, we've got all players that can hit a good ball into dangerous areas and we've got some powerful powerful lads in the, in the box as well. Obviously, not having Yeri has been a, been a bit of a blow, but Ben's back now. Um, we've seen Mason score, we've seen Michael Keane score, so we've got to try and build on that. I think every opportunity that we get from a set player is a chance for us to create a good goal scoring chance with those players. On the defensive side, um, I would say certainly some improvement early on. You know, if I refer particularly to the Newcastle game where you know, we're playing one of the best set play teams in the, in the country. Um, and we defended 17 set plays in that game, a lot of them coming in injury time. You know, good delivery in, some big, big guys in the box. And I thought we were, we were immense in that game. And that's the attitude and that's the kind of level that we've got to take forward into. You, know, you hear it's a cliche in football about, you know, we're only focusing on the get next game. With a set play, you can only focus on the set play that's there at that time, whether that's a defending one or attacking one. Look no further forward than that. Um, we're working hard on our organisation defensively and we're also trying to come up with some creative ways to come up with opportunities on the attacking side. How much goes into that in terms of the data, as you mentioned, and also the, the, the research as well? Well, I've got a fantastic um, analysis team here, uh, led by Matt, and I'm working closely on a day-to-day -day basis with, with Kaita as well. Um, we're getting lots of data and statistics coming in. And you know nothing more important than me uh, for me than looking back through the, the video of the opposition, and that's not just you know the last game and the game before, but it's all the historical games as well because you know teams change around what they do because if you are, if you only do what you did in the last game, the team that you're playing next you're going to know what they're going to do. So you've got to go back, you've got to look at five six games ago. You even might look at the last season, um, and we're a little bit like that on the offensive side, we can't necessarily show something that we did in previous games because the team we're playing next are expecting it because the other teams are doing good analysis of you as well. So that surprise element is very important. Um, and like I said, the, the, the analysis team are really thorough in providing the coaches, providing me with lots of information that, that I can then come up with some ideas to then deliver on the training ground. Obviously, the objective for this season is to, to move up the table as quickly as possible. But in the longer term, what do you hope to achieve here with, with Frank in terms of implementing a new culture and, and hopefully a new style as well? No, of course, it's, it's going to be great to think that we can be here long term, um, build an exciting squad, uh, a certain brand of football. The stadium is, is, is down the road with that as well. But you know, our focus has to be now. On the short term. Which sort of negates my next question, which was about pre season. I was going to ask you about are you looking forward to starting from zero in pre season, getting um, the lads back in after the summer? But I, I guess 
as you mentioned, there's, there's no focus on that just yet. Oh, it'd, be, it'd be nice to, 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 to look into a crystal ball and say we've got to the 22nd of May and the team's in a nice stable position. We can look forward to obviously a little bit of a break and then come back fresh and invigorated and ready to, ready to go again. But there's lots of hard work to be done before that. Pre-season obviously gives you a time to implement your ideas in a lot more detail. When you come in in the middle of the season, a lot of it's about prioritising. A lot's about getting immediate impact and results fast. And you know we have done that in some games, and now we need to now we need to do that again. So, yeah, of course, it'd be great to think of down the line, but our focus really has to be on now. You mentioned coming, the challenges that coming in mid-season uh, presents, but how beneficial will that be in the long term in terms of getting to know this group and obviously the, the, the way the club works and, and that sort of thing? Well, when you come into a team in the middle of the season, which I've you know I've done before, I did it at Swansea. Um, and I did it at Reading even later in the season, only with nine games to go. What happens in that period is that you really have to accelerate your learning and your knowledge fast. I remember it reminded me of those other times, but when we came here first, the first weeks, one of the most intense weeks I've had um, you know, as a coach in football, because you, you know, you're, you're, you're quickly into a, into a game, you've got to learn about as much as you can so you know a lot of the players because having watched a lot of Premier League games and prepared to play against you we know the Premier League players who they are but then there's that next group of players just underneath them that you don't know so well they might be just in between the 23s and the first team you've got to get to know them you've got to get to know all the backroom staff um, you're building relationships at a very fast pace as well as preparing for a game um, that's coming in the short term. So it's such a condensed, intense period where you learn a massive amount compared to where you can not step back, but you've got more time on your hands if you come in at the start of pre-season. You're going to get six or seven weeks before you play your first game where we had just a matter of days. And just finally, <clears throat> obviously a position we don't want to be in at the moment towards the foot of the table. What's the, the feeling like around the dressing room and around the coaching staff at the minute? Is it obviously focused, but is it a confidence within the ability that we've got in the, in the squad as well? Our last Premier League game was just a fantastic feeling. Um, it, was, it was brilliant in the dressing room afterwards. And that's the feeling we want to recreate now as many times as possible before the end of the season. I've got to say, this group of players, and I've worked with lots of squads over the last... 12, 13 years, which is hundreds and hundreds of players. This is a really good group of boys. Right? They're working hard every day. They're focused. Um, they're very compliant in following the ideas of the manager and the coaches. So they're a really good group to work with. And they want it. They really want to do well. And I think they're going to do it. I think they are. We've got a lot of belief in them. See, some of the performances have been a little bit up and down. Um, but we totally believe in, in this group of players. They're hard-working, they're focused, they know what needs to be done. See, the more and more the games go on, that pressure intensity grows. But it's up to all of us to be able to step up and, uh, and handle that. Now, we're in a privileged position to be working at Premier League Football Club, uh, a really good Premier League Football Club in Everton. And we're all going to be fighting until that very, very last game this season.